It was a typical day in New York City. A day free of carnage. Miles Morales was out of costume with his friend and was eyeing a new pair of sneakers that he just had to have. Like in our world, the resale market in Miles' universe must be deadly because these shoes were $300. And Brooklyn Spider-Man had never had that type of money. His friend, being the voice of reason, would remind the entranced sneakerhead that money doesn't just fall from the, or does it? Before he could finish his sentence, it really happened. Money began raining down on the streets of New York. It was the Scorpion, crashing on an armored truck after they'd refused to peacefully surrender the money. Seeing danger, Miles, now serious, would begin to rush off to prepare for action. His friend already understood what was happening, and Miles would make his way to a place clear enough to transform into Spider-Man. His camouflage ability made that easy enough. The Scorpion, meanwhile, was still terrorizing innocent civilians. Before he could go too far, a blast of web would cover his stinger. Spider-Man. The Scorpion would call out as he was now face to face with the web crawler. Close to his victims, the Scorpion would correct himself, now referring to Miles as Spider-Man Jr., some Brooklyn wannabe. The fight would now begin. Miles would swing forward and trap his large enemy in a blast of webbing. This did little to slow the giant villain. With rage-filled eyes, the Scorpion ripped himself free and roared, I'm gonna kill you now, little man. Spider-Man easily dodged the first attempt to strike him, but the follow-up would hit, and he was grabbed by the Scorpion's tail. Strictly amateur hour. Miles was mercilessly thrown and went flying like a baseball at Yankee Stadium. That one hurts, but the fight wasn't over yet. The Scorpion was rushing in, ready to finish the job. Miles, desperately wanting to avoid a hit like that again, would again activate his camouflage ability. Try and hit what you can't see, chump. In the blink of an eye, Miles would close in and scorch his enemy with a burst of venom blast. It wasn't going to be that easy though. Funny enough, the Scorpion suit was insulated. This wouldn't discourage Spider-Man though. With force, he'd send the Psycho crashing down. The fight would continue, with Miles getting the upper hand. Things were going so well, in fact, that he even asked the Scorpion if he wanted to just give up. Reeling from the hits he'd just taken, under the now cloudy and raining New York sky, the Scorpion would reply, You don't know, Mac Gargan. That name, Gargan, could be heard nearby. Taken back, both Spider-Man and the Scorpion would turn their heads in the direction of the voices. It was an ambush. A swarm of identical, creepy, four-armed figures were approaching them fast, and neither Spider-Man nor the Scorpion knew who or what they were. The scary figures were after the Scorpion. They grabbed and jumped at him until Miles interrupted to save him. After all, Miles wants him in jail, not dead. This disruption only made things worse. Instead of creepily repeating the same Gargan, they were now muttering the word kill. With them both being targets, Spider-Man and the Scorpion had to call a truce for now. The two would continue fighting their unknown enemy, but one thing stood out. The Scorpion would notice that their orange outfits were the uniforms from Ravencroft, the place they put real psychos. There was clearly something being done to control these strange figures, and the Scorpion knew who it could be. Before he could get to that though, Miles was having his own revelation. He glared at the spiral shape embedded in the head of the strange beasts. It was something he'd seen before on something that tried to kill him. Memories of a symbiote came to mind. The mark of something ancient and evil. It was then that Miles knew for sure there was someone else behind this and these people were being controlled. They had to stop this without hurting the people being used. The hell we do! The scorpion would yell out as he punched back with force at a creature. While the scorpion was fighting with intent to harm, Spider-Man was pleading with him that this was not right. But his earlier enemy didn't care, and he would remind Miles that he would finish dealing with him after this was dealt with. The scorpion was on a rampage. The hordes of enemies had to be stopped, and for him, this was fun. But still, Miles pleaded. 
The enemies were strong, and their strength was starting to be an issue, and so was their breath. But this was the least of his problems. Knowing he had a low chance of fighting his way out of this, the scorpion would stab Miles in the back, smacking him towards the enemies to be bait, while the scorpion started running with his tail between his legs. Suddenly, a voice called out to the coward. Well, that was dumb, Mac. The kid could have helped you against me. It was Carnage. The monster would claim to be Carnage and so much more. With ease, it would then reach out and grab the scorpion who it claimed still had a tiny piece of the symbiote from previously being bonded. The coward would be pulled all the way back to where he was before running away. We need that piece, Mac. We're going to tear your spine out now to get it. As Carnage began doing just that, a voice would yell out, No! And a blast of voltage would scorch the beast. It was Miles. This opportunity was what the scorpion needed. He had to get away before Carnage killed him. Again though, a voice would join the chaos. He's not gonna kill you, Gargan. Not if you come with me. It was Venom. The sight haunted Miles, but Venom would scoop up disgruntled Scorpion and take off like an anime schoolgirl, leaving Miles alone with a horde of monsters. He had to do this alone. His own power had to be enough. With a demonic smile, Carnage would speak. It'll be the last time. You'll never be alone again, kid. Bring him into the fold. Just then, the living red organism would, with determination, spring towards Miles in all directions. Get off me! He cried as the light faded. They drained his strength as he gasped and reached for help. A small mountain of red drowned Miles. It's time for you to become what you really are. A perfect little monster. Miles had become a Spider-Man Carnage hybrid bursting from its cocoon. The bodies, wrapped up and controlled by the red sludge, are born again as something new. They were now a family, and within the creatures, they could feel the dead spirits of the host body begging for control. But those cries were helpless because they were now joined through the will of Null and Carnage. They were now their true selves. The beasts were all gathered, and the new Spider-Man was, in their eyes, looking better than ever. He looked ready to kill a man, which was perfect because that's what they needed him to do. Holding the transformed Spider-Man, the leader of this horde was certain the child would make him proud. And if that wasn't scary enough, he'd be told to bring the newly transformed notorious serial killer Happy Dan along for the mission. The idea of committing murder destroyed Spider-Man. He would now try harder to resist the creature's control. But determined to fulfill the will of Null, the beast smothered Miles' resistance. It was time to begin their mission. They had pointed at prey, and so it was time to hunt. Swinging past the Brooklyn Bridge, the being that was once Spider-Man was mentally lost. The name and identity of Miles Morales was lost. Memories of Uncle Aaron introducing the Brooklyn Bridge came back now. Miles. My name is Miles Morales, he began to remember. Again, though, this resistance would be smashed. Moments later, they had reached their destination, the place of their target. Behind the window of an office building, it was J. Jonah Jameson in a tense meeting that was about to take a turn for the worst. With no hesitation, the two soldiers of Null smashed through the window of their target. It was time for carnage. The two knights of darkness roared out, kill, as they greeted their target. Jameson knew they were after him. The freaks were always after him. He ran like hell while the wild beasts charged from behind, shattering anything in their way. Jameson at one time thought he had lost them, but no, they were right above him, ready to feast. In a flash, they dropped down in front of him. The claws of the creature reached closer as he begged for them to just tell him what they wanted. But there was no need for words. As he neared his last breath, a sizzling blast would ring out and save the journalist. It was Silver Sable, with a small army here to save the desperate man. They'd tell Jameson to take cover, and a blast of shots would be fired at the pursuers. The shots failed to slow them though, and in an instant, one had gotten close, slamming a gunner on the ground. 
Amidst the chaos, the being that was once Spider-Man again tried to remember who he really is. But the smell of blood in the air was too strong, and the creature controlling him was too strong. Silver Sable wondered what these things were as she held a charged sword, ready to fight off the being holding Miles captive. She would put up a good fight, but it was no use. These things were too durable. Kill, the creatures would yell as they grabbed and attacked the woman. It was time to finish her, but Jameson wouldn't allow that. He'd throw a stapler, aiming to distract the monsters, barking at them to leave her alone. It didn't work though. No, stop! Miles would desperately call out. This isn't me. It was time to finish the job, but Miles refused to give in. He couldn't remember his name, but he knew this wasn't right. The creature ripped at its head as it battled with Miles internally. He did it! Spider-Man miraculously regained control and began running from the scene to protect the targets, leaving the other creatures confused and in pursuit. As he ran, he now remembered his name and who he was. Carnage had said they were connected, and with that, Miles would try to plead with the serial killer turned monster. He'd remind him that despite doing bad things before, the man was still a human, not a monster like this. It worked. The other victim was able to respond and seemingly calm down for the time being. The momentary win wouldn't last. Again, a blast would come from somewhere else. It was Jameson's security from earlier, Silver Sable. Again, Miles lost control and the beast would charge to attack its pursuer. She would fight back, attempting a swift kick, but ultimately Sable would be mercilessly beaten. As yet again, Jameson's only hope was running away from the controlled Miles Morales. The beast was relentless and would now savagely bite into the desperate reporter who released deafening screams as his blood sprayed. As the teeth of the transformed Miles Morales sank deep inside of J. Jonah, he again searched for who he was. This time, he could taste blood, and it wasn't his own. Again, Miles struggled with the creature. Miles and the beast screeched, no kill, as they pulled away. The journalist could see the figure losing itself. You're struggling. You don't have to do this. The spiral monster's tongue stretched out as it still wrestled internally. It needed to smother Miles' resistance with the will of Null, but the hero resisted, saying, No, I won't do this. Miles now verbally expressed his refusal as his face slowly began to emerge and power welled up in his hand. With his identity and life on the line, Miles would give it his all and shock the creature's body with a venom blast. He was now free. He was himself again. Seeing the red organism away from himself, our hero could only wonder what it was. Jonah was bleeding, and Silver Sable was quick to offer help. Jameson was already back to his fiery self and demanded to be taken to a hospital. But as Sable helped him up, something dangerous was lurking from the shadows. Brooklyn Spider-Man still had problems to deal with. The serial killer turned beast was still there. Miles would again try to appeal to him and offer help. With surprising anger though, the monster would punch at Miles. Not fair! Clearly upset with his former sibling's newfound freedom. Then it tackled Spider-Man and the two fell through the sky. As they did, Spider-Man pleaded with the man to fight back against the creature's control. The two would crash into a rooftop pool and the wall crawler would dart away before he could be grabbed. Miles continued to flee, unable to do the Venom Blast again thanks to his head still being a mess. So it would come down to a fist fight, but his opponent had more than fists. Spider-Man punched with incredible force, again telling the man to snap out of the spell. Back with Jameson, he would have his wounds wrapped up to stop the bleeding as he continued to sarcastically tease his savior. But as she walked away to make sure it was clear up ahead, she let him know she was out of his price range. What neither of them knew though was that danger was lurking. As she left, Jameson was wrapped up and choked by the same creature that had grabbed Miles earlier. Rapidly, Jameson would transform, his new body ripping his suit apart. Kill, kill! A newly suited giant beast was born. 
while that creature made its move, Spider-Man was again attempting to persuade the serial killer, reminding him that he's a human, his own person. It was working. But to interrupt their progress, the transformed Jameson now grips the killer's head. After brutalizing its fellow host, the new monster threw the other off the roof, much to Miles' horror. His new enemy was out for blood, but Miles couldn't focus on this fight. He had a life to save. With speed, the web crawler swung away in search of the transformed serial killer. He landed on the roof of another building. Happy Dan's condition was unclear, but Miles was relieved to see that the mass murderer was at least alive. The other monster was missing, and that thing couldn't be left to roam. The unconscious serial killer would be webbed up, and Spider-Man would go looking for his target. Thanks to the trail of damage and screams, it didn't take long to find the deadly version of Jameson. Ready to end this, Miles caught the creature's attention. Ready for a fight, Miles would swing towards the beast, sending him crashing to the ground. While the two fought, Miles knew this was bad. This thing wanted to go back to Carnage to add its strength to his. As they went at it, some kid just stood there with his headphones blasting, completely oblivious to what was going on. Miles knew that if this thing was stopped from getting to Carnage, then it would stay around here, harming innocent people. The beast charged at a kid, but Spider-Man was quicker and slammed into the beast, sending them both crashing through a glass window as Van's shoes went flying. After landing in the store and gaining the upper hand, Spider-Man prepared to end this. He fired a concentrated venom blast into the creature. Once it was laid out and stopped moving, he finally caught his breath. The store owner came over to check if Spider-Man was alright. Miles apologized for the damages, saying that it was the only way to save the kid from earlier. Fortunately, the owner had insurance and was grateful for the hero's help. In all the chaos, a bunch of shoes were damaged, and among them were the $300 shoes Miles really wanted. Spider-Man insisted that he couldn't take rewards, but the owner insisted that he take them as a token of appreciation, like the key to the city. But before Miles could respond, the red symbiote removed itself from Jameson. Seeing that it was alive and on the move, Spider-Man had to chase after it. But despite this, the owner promised to hold the shoes for the hero. Miles knew that if he failed to catch the nasty thing, yet another person would be at risk. This piece of carnage would never stop searching for someone to bond with and control as long as it was alive. But it was Miles' only connection to carnage, the only way into his plans. He'd escaped the thing's control before, and so he knew what he had to do. Miles grabbed at the demonic being, allowing it to wrap around his body before revealing an all-new Spider-Man. Alright, carnage, here we come. This time was different. Miles was no longer just a vessel. He'd become a perfect symbiote fusion. Check out these videos for more Spider-Man symbiote stories we know you won't want to miss.